Well, happy Tuesday. Uh, good morning. Uh, instead of tacos, today we're going to do trout on Tuesday. Uh, I want to welcome you into the uh, Bloom Kitchen at uh, Conestoga's Waterloo Campus. Uh, where we've been uh, happily chugging away in our, our new building for about five years now and really loving every minute of it. Uh, today we're going to do sort of a take on the prosciutto and melon salad garnished with a beautiful filet of Ontario trout. It's a really classic Italian dish uh, that we've sort of Canadianized uh, and made our own. So a few things we need over here. Of course some nice portions of um, rainbow trout. Okay, and we filleted these. We've taking the scales off and we just give them a little score and that's going to help ensure that that uh, skin doesn't bubble and that we can get it hopefully as crispy as possible because uh, certainly texture is one of those key elements we want to think about anytime uh, we're creating a dish. Okay? In addition, we've got a, a beautiful mint and arugula puree just spiked with a little bit of lemon juice and olive oil uh, to kind of bring it to life. Okay. We've got some uh, melon that has been soaked in a mint simple syrup. So both some cantaloupe and some honeydew. Some wonderful uh, arugula, pea tenders, thin sliced shallots, roasted grapes. And this is all gonna create a really lovely appetizer. Nice way to, light fresh dish to kind of wake up the palate with that trout there is that really uh, satiating element to start to fill the belly a little. I'm going to welcome King Shook over here as well. He's one of our first year culinary students, one of our rising stars. And together we're going to each cook a portion of this dish. So over here in our cast iron pan, we're going to start by just putting it on our French top stove. Um, this is a more powerful version of any stove top. Uh, one of the primary advantages of this versus a more traditional gas stove top or electric stove top at home uh, is its capacity to hold heat. We've got a few very, very powerful burners under this uh, inch thick slab of cast iron. And so this is going to help us heat our pans quickly and keep them hot so we can maintain that nice uh, temperature all the way through the fish's lifespan. Okay. While that's happening, we're going to make sure that our fish is nice and dry. Okay. Anytime you're looking to crisp the skin, you want to make sure there's no scales and you want to make sure you're starting with very, very dry skin. Because of course, to get something crispy, you need to remove as much moisture as possible. Okay, so doing a little bit of that work here is just gonna make our life easier once it gets into the pan. Okay, we'll season these both with salt on the top, and then a little salt and pepper on the bottom. Okay, now as we go over here to the pan, there's a lot of different tricks people have for assessing doneness. You hear people say, oh, a drop of water should, should spit back at you. Um, I always look, and this is perfect timing, we're just starting to see it, little wisps of smoke. When we're searing trout skin and trying to get that crispy, crispy skin, if we want to imagine that the floor is no heat at all, and that this point right here is smoking hot, we want to cook just under that smoking hot point. Sometimes that means pulling our pan off the heat for a minute or adjusting the heat below it if we've gotten a little too hot, but really trying to walk that fine line between very hot and too hot. Okay, a little bit of canola oil to start here. Okay, now King Shook, as you add your trout into the pan, you're gonna do just like I am. You're gonna swirl this around. Okay, to coat the whole bottom of the pan, okay? And at this point, we're gonna tilt it forward we're going to put our trout in and let it fall away from us. Okay, and that ensures that any splashing of hot oil that might happen, happens the direction we want it to go, which is not, our, not towards us and our skin. Now, early in the fish's lifespan, it's helpful to have this tool um, this is a fish spatula, it's called that, uh, because it's so great for this exact context. It's very, very thin uh, and is very, very flexible. Um, so it helps us kind of get under that skin. It's a little early to be checking on it just yet, but what we can do is just very gently press down on that filet 
to ensure that we have full contact between the skin and the pan. Sometimes fish curls up a little bit, has a tendency to buckle a little bit. So we just wanna be mindful of that and try to prevent that from happening, okay? And as we can see, these pans are pretty hot. So we're gonna pull them right to the front here so that we can slowly crisp that skin without going over. As that happens, King Shook and I are both going to start to build our plates out, okay? So we'll start with a nice dollop of arugula puree right in the middle, mint and arugula puree. There you are. And we're just gonna spread that very gently. Okay, whenever I'm plating a sauce in this way, I'm always gonna keep the edge of the spoon behind the edge of the puree so I can spread it out and have it look almost like a pizza crust, that nice rounded edge, which looks a little nicer and a little bit more intentional than if we've gone over it and create that sort of feathered edge uh, that looks not quite as polished and professional. Okay, just very quickly checking back in with our fish, continuing to just very lightly push down. Okay. And Charles are very thin fillets. So we can already see King Shook's fish is, what do you say, about 50% of the way cooked through, mm. right? We can see that uh, flesh turning a little bit more opaque uh, and sort of a lighter sort of peachy color. Um, mine was just a little bit thicker, so it's taking a little bit more time, okay? When we're cooking this fish in particular, I like to cook it, if we think about steak temperatures, sort of like a medium well, right? Trout doesn't like being raw. Sashimi trout's not really my thing. Uh, but we want to be very careful it being a fatty fish, not to overcook it, because that's going to dry it out. So we want to maintain a little bit of a rosy color to it, okay? We'll just turn back around here towards the salad and take our next steps. Okay, with a little paper towel here, we're gonna take a few pieces of melon out and just blot them dry. Here, I'll give you two of mine if you give me two of yours. Wonderful. Okay. And we're just gonna build sort of four corners to our circle. Just alternating. And then we're gonna to start to fill in the gaps with a few of these roasted grapes. Okay, we've just blistered these in a hot pan with a little bit of oil. And it's really the sweet and savory contrast in this dish that makes it really special. Turning back to our fish, we can see King Shook's is maybe 70% of the way cooked through here, right? Just a little bit remaining uncooked, okay? So at this point, uh, he's gonna go under, okay? And try to liberate and turn it over. And we're just gonna ki kiss that other side in the pan very, very briefly. So let's see if you can do that for me. There you go. Perfect. And we'd see, especially on this side, we've got a really nice, beautiful golden crust. Okay. Over here, check in on mine as well. Okay. And likewise, got that nice golden crust. Okay. Out of the pan and off the heat. The rest of this is now gonna to come together really, really quickly. Okay, a few leaves of arugula. Okay, and these, I don't mind if they start to sort of peek out from around that puree. We do wanna be a little bit sneaky and hide a few things from the guests so that they have to kind of dig in to get the full experience. But a little something around the outside, just a little tease can be a nice visual effect. A few really thinly sliced shallots, bring some balance into everything. Okay. 
We've got crispy prosciutto here. This is being sliced really thinly and baked between two sheet trays. This gives a really salty, umami rich flavor and texture. And we'll cover that all over with the trout. And last but not least, a few pea tenders. This is that initial shoot that comes out of the ground as peas spring in the new growing season. On top, I'm gonna give just a light, beautiful freshness, a little bit of crunch. Okay, and as simple as that, two wonderful portions of our prosciutto and melon salad with crispy local trout. I hope you enjoy.